What's up, what's up, boys and girls, children of all ages? Sorry, we woke up the kid. So, there's a, um, I just got an email, I was just checking my emails, and you guys have got to hear this. Um, and this is, like, when you see this, you have got to, you've got to stay on top of your numbers, of your, your accounts receivable. Because this is happening a lot. A lot of brokers are doing it. And they're getting away with it. Unfortunately. Hold on, give me one second. It's called Hit It and Move On. It's a broker scam with more loopholes. So, here's what happened. I'm going to read some of this article and then we're going to talk about it. The phrase hit it and move on was DAT compliance manager Tammy Hart's description of what amounts to a crooked business model among small fraction of federally authorized brokers. Move as many loads as possible, fail to pay the carriers and vanish. A big part of that is exploiting the time lags and current notification requirements of surety providers and Federal Motor Carrier Association to run up as much business as you can before your authorities revoke over valid claims from unpaid owner operators and fleets. So, what the... I think loud, boy. This truck is loud for a quiet truck. So, <clears throat> what they're doing is these brokers are starting up and they're, they're getting as many loads as they can. And they'll pay you whatever you, like, they'll pay you all the money. Well, you know why they'll give you all the money? Because they're not going to pay you anyway. So, they go in, they lowball the carrier or the the shipper they highball the carrier so they get the shipper's money but they don't pay you and a lot of it's on 30 60 and 90 day pay so by the time you notice it and you do it like you um come after their bond after you've called them for weeks and weeks and weeks for some reason, the last thing a carrier wants to do is go after a bond. Well, I'm here to tell you, if you don't pay me, I'm coming after a bond quick. And people are going to say, oh, well, you're going to ruin, you'll ruin a relationship over X amount of dollars. Well, let me tell you something. If I have to chase my money, I don't want that relationship. I have money out to move their freight. They have no money out of pocket. None. What money do they have out of pocket? So, in the freight world, is rough. Because COD loads are non-existent. Pretty much. Very rarely do you see a freight load... That's COD, unless it's cars. So, carriers that don't factor, they'll work with anybody and wait on their money. Now, if you have a factoring company, these people probably will not be factorable to begin with. Your factoring company's going to say, nope, we're not doing it. Because they're new and because their credit's down. They don't have the credit for this. So, now I'm going to read a little bit more. Idaho-based Alan Workman speculates that such a case last year was plenty lucrative indeed for the brokerage Cedar Freight. It was in business for about four months. This brokerage was only in business for four months. Workman received no more than a prorated 35% on a claim made to a surety provider on what may have been the first load moved by the federally authorized broker out of Iowa. So what that means is 
that carrier went after the surety bond and got 35% of what he was owed. And with our um, profit, profit margin, I bet you he lost money. Even getting 35%, he probably lost money. Assuming all claimants were paid at 35%, he says the bond maximum of $75,000 covered some $215,000 in business conducted by the broker. Since some cheated clients never filed against the bond, the real theft total would well exceed that so what he's saying is that bond was only good for $75,000 but they only paid out 35% so if they paid out 35% of $215,000 that was a 75 grand so that brokerage made $215,000 didn't pay nobody and the surety bond paid 75 grand that's it to get a bond it'll cost you 3,500 to 7 grand workman estimates and a couple more thousand for corporate registration in the broker state and the authority application so you might put out 10,000 to make 200,000 and more in a few months and take the rest of the year off. Throw your idea away and start over again. To make matters worse, the assumed $215,000 in claims approved for prorating by the bonding company doesn't include any load subject to little known exemptions to surety requirements. Certain commodities, and in this case, intrastate loads. So, intrastate loads are not covered under the surety bond. Workman himself was unlucky enough to have handled two moves with pickups and destinations in a single state book by the broker. The first job was hauling a big earth mover in Washington state. The shipper having no relationship with the broker posted the load on uship.com where it received broker Cedar Freight's bid. It was Cedar's first successful bid on the platform you ship representative note at $1,600. U-Ship says that the shipper in this case took a risk by doing something that U-Ship doesn't recommend, contracting with an entity that had no review on the platform, not to mention little to no history in business as a broker. However, Everybody's got to start somewhere, he says, of Cedars Freight Brokers account. Think about that. You ship tells shippers, customers, not to do it. Don't don't help, don't take these guys. Which I've never I've worked with them, never received that email never received that memo i've never seen them say that okay but yet they will put an unknown carrier with no experience no history on their platform why because they benefit they get paid that's why workman then found the load posted by the broker on a different online platform truckstop.com where it, what did I just say $2,000 offer rate more than the shipper ultimately paid the broker I did not read all of this before I started this video more than the shipper ultimately paid the broker was an attractive care for hauling only 64 loaded miles Workman didn't look up Cedar Freight's authority history before accepting the load. Had he done that, he would have seen that the authority had been active mere days earlier. If it sounds too good to be true, guys, it probably is. He hauled another such load within Washington for the broker shortly thereafter for a promise of 
hundred dollars, including involving pilot cars, special permitting, and more. These loads moved in July and August, respectively. After failed communications with Cedar Freight about getting paid, including promises of checks in the mail, he filed on the company's surety bond in early October. Only then did he learn from the bond provider that since these were interstate loads, they weren't covered by the bond. My man's out $4,200. But because they're intrastate loads, that's not covered. It's a huge loophole workman and others feel owner operators would do well to keep in mind before accepting intrastate work from an unfamiliar broker. So if you're moving state to state or in state, not state to state within state, I'm sorry. If you're moving freight within state, make sure you do your background checks. Well, do it anyway. But if it's an intrastate move, you better be on it. Nobody is immune to this. There is major brokers going down. LNR carrier, LNR brokerage, huge, huge car carrier, huge car carrier. Now they're in the reefer and something else. They've been screwing people over for months. They finally decided to go bankrupt. Lord knows how many car carriers got screwed out. We may or may not have been one. It's a legal way to steal. That's the remedy unless you sue them in court. Or what's the remedy unless you sue them in court? Nothing. And you're not going to get nothing from them in court because they're going to file bankruptcy and you're done. So what hap what's the percentage on bond claim outcomes on interstate loads? Bond company denied the claim, but broker eventually paid 12%. Now, this is not this brokerage. This is bond, like this is just bonds in general, interstate bonds. Bond company paid the claim 24% of the time. Bond company paid the claim and was never paid 64% of the time. So now, they started in June, I think I said it was. They went live in June. Uh, let me double check. So they went in June. And in November is when the surety bond notified FMCSA of the cancellation. From June to November, they got all that free money. Paid nobody. So, you've got to be careful when booking these loads. And car haulers, this can happen to you too. This can happen to us. Even major players go out of business. Major players go out of business. Look at all the companies this year, like big trucking companies that went out of business. There is so many brokers that come and go. And here's the problem with the car hauling industry. Number one issue, anybody can broker a load. You do not have to be a broker to be on the load board, which is BS. If you're a dealer, you can be on there. If you're an exporter, you can be on there. And they have no bond. There is no surety bond. Me as a transporter, I can put them on there. I was burnt out of $1,600 from a carrier, another carrier that played this same game. 
did the stick and move on me. The hit and move. Boom. And you know, by the time it was, I think it was like three days before it was time for me to get paid. I went in to look to get the numbers and make sure I had all the right information. There was like 35 negative ratings. Boom, 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 boom. Because here's the issue with Central. You put up a rating, resolution, resolution. You've got all these days. But now here's one good thing about Central I can say. If they see multiples come up, like if I hit it today, you hit it tomorrow, and then somebody hits it the day after, that's gone. Like them days, they're gone. They'll just start popping up like boom, 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 boom. They will immediately let everybody know what's going on with that account. They won't suspend them. They won't get rid of them. But yet, they will let us know. I don't know what that helps, but like this guy was a carrier. He had no bond. You know what I mean? So th this is a dog eat dog business industry. It's, it's very lucrative, but it can be very, very nasty. Very nasty. And sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. And I know what I know. There's going to be some comments. Oh, only do COD. Only do COD. Let me know how that works for you. You can't. You can, but you can't successfully only run COD loads. You just can't do it. So, you've got to, you've got to be willing to take money or take, like, wait for payment. Now, there is some factoring companies now that will do car haulers on, like, the big stuff, like the metros and the Montways. They're not going to, um, they're, they're not going to factor an exporter. And I'm going to tell you right now, any exporter that's on this truck is cash in hand cash money that's it cash money um i don't do the 30 days the nine i don't do none of that i will take cash app but i i don't do uh 30 i don't even wait three days for them because those guys aren't in the country so guys that was an article from where did i get to overdrive i believe OverdriveOnline.com uh, came to my email, so I just figured I'd share it with you. Um, be careful out here. Be picky on your loads. Okay? If you see a load that's paying crazy money, check on it. I'm not saying don't take it. Check on it. Ask questions. Why? Don't say, why are you paying so much? You don't ask that question. Is it an in-op? Where's it at? Um, you know, how heavy is it? Can I get to it? Ask questions that would make people run away from this load. Like that truck I had a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago, that dually with the service body. It paid very well. Do you know why it paid very well? Because it didn't run and drive. It was a heavy truck and five carriers were there and wouldn't move it that's why it paid well now if that was a toyota camry run and drive from an auction going to a dealer oh that's a red flag you don't get them at a buck fifty two dollars a mile no you just don't so it could be now let's say it's going to west virginia or north dakota or one of them um, flyover states I call them okay so it should pay good it should pay very well then so um, that's that figured I let you all in on a little industry dirt like share subscribe hit that ding ding and I will see you tomorrow peace